Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial on OBS Studio and today we're going to be taking a closer look at one of the must-have uh, plugins for OBS Studio and when I say must-have I mean this it will make your life a million times easier by installing this plugin in OBS Studio. If you're not sure how to install plugins on OBS Studio uh, we have a tutorial on that earlier in the course you can go and check that out uh, but the plugin we're going to be looking at today is Advanced Scene Switcher. Now a little disclaimer this particular tutorial is going to take quite a while because there's a lot of things to talk about so if you need uh, uh, some sustenance, some food, or some tea or coffee, go grab it now and continue with the tutorial. Now, Advanced Scene Switcher is a plugin that people were crying out for when OBS Studio first came out. And it is basically a plugin which will allow you to program different automatic scene switching sequences. So you can basically tell this plugin, if this happens for this amount of time, I want you to switch from scene A to scene B, and it will do it automatically every time that happens. Or if I'm idle, if I'm AFK for a minute on this scene, I want you to trans, uh, I want you to change to scene B automatically, and it will do that for you. It's extremely helpful, useful. Uh, plugin and you can find it here on the obsproject.com directory it's called advanced scene switcher uh, the version right now for me is 0.17.1 uh, could be a little bit different for you but either way just go to download and install it as we usually install a plugin now we've got our obs studio right here where do I find advanced scene switcher obviously we've got our scenes in the bottom left hand corner here uh, we've got the scene options and settings in a dock down here, but that's not where we find the advanced scene switcher. Where we find it is we go to the top of our application, we go to tools, we click on tools and we go to advanced scene switcher. Do not confuse it with automatic scene switcher. That also does uh, a few, uh, it does a few things that we want it to do, but we're not gonna look at that right now. We're gonna go look at advanced scene switcher. So I'm gonna click on that. And it opens this huge, confusing menu. But don't worry, you can get your head around it really quickly. Now, I'm just going to click stop there, and I'll explain why I did that a little later on. This menu, let's start from the top. We have multiple, multiple tabs at the top of this settings menu. We've got macro, transition, pause, etc., etc. And what these all are, if I extend it, you can see them all. What these all are are basically triggers. They are triggers for switching a scene. And we go into the tab to choose that particular title as a trigger. So if I wanted a change in media to trigger a scene transition, I'd go to the media tab. If I wanted an execution Ex executable on my computer to trigger a transition, I would go to the executable tab. Let's take a look at this first in the executable options. So what I want to do, I want to set up a if function, basically. If I open this executable on my PC, then OBS switches scenes to this. So basically, I'm going to click this button plus anytime I want to add a new if function or a new function in this advanced scene switcher, I need to click the plus button to add a new line of code. I click on the plus and it, you'll see here it has everything laid out for you in a very user-friendly interface. When this is running, switch to, and then your list of scenes, using and you choose your transition. So, if I click this drop-down menu, in theory there should be a whole host of different EXE uh, applications or files on my computer. So we can see here we've got, let's have a look for some that uh, you might use whilst you're streaming. Uh, Cortana, when Cortana is running, so that's like basically Windows's answer to Siri. Uh, have I got any games on here? So this would be a very, very good um, this would be a very good choice, wouldn't it? iTunes helpers there. Um, if I open up uh, a, a game, it will appear in this list, but right now I'm just looking for something that I can open. There's TeamViewerService.exe. I use TeamViewer quite a lot to help people with their streams. Let's open up TeamViewer. So when TeamViewer is running, switch to, uh, let's say ending. Let's say ending, using transition fade. And that's all set up now. So if I press close, and then I go here, and I go TeamViewer, Keep an eye on my OBS in the background. It should 
switch to ending. Well, it didn't, but what is the EXE of this team viewer? I wonder. Let's go back and troubleshoot this together, shall we? So let's go to tools and automatic uh, advanced scene switcher, even over to executable. Let's choose a different EXE. It's probably that team viewer is installed in a different EXE file. Uh, what have we got here that I can open very, very easily? Do, 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 do. Start menu experience, Thor 300 application. What else here? Explorer Firefox.exe. Here we go. Is running. Switch to ending. Now, I know exactly why that didn't just work. And I have tripped myself up on something which will trip lots of people up when they first use this program. What you need to do, once I've got this code running, once I've got it sorted, I also need to close Firefox on my other window for this to work. I need to go over to general. You see this tab here, general, and I need to click start. If this start button is not activated, none of these advanced scene switches will work. And that's the mistake that I just made. So we troubleshooted together. We found the issue. The problem is I always have this on. So I just forgot that I turned it off right at the start. So let's turn this on. Now, advanced scene switcher is checking for all of those uh, if functions to find out if something's open. Now you see it switched to ending. That probably means that if I press the window button right now, look, Firefox is open in the bottom corner here. So let me close Firefox. I've closed Firefox. There's no other instances of Firefox open on my PC now. So if I switch to live, it's staying on live. Now, if I go Windows and I go Firefox and I drag it to the other window, you see that my OBS Studio automatically switched to ending. So that is the executable if function. I'm going to need to close Firefox now. Otherwise, it's not going to let me switch back to live. And I'm going to go remove that if function as well, because otherwise it will do it every time I open Firefox. So I don't really want that, but it's a great executable option for when you want your scenes to switch when you open programs. So let's get rid of that by pressing the minus button down here, and that's gone. Another really useful uh, tab up here, I'm only going to go through a few of them, which most people use, is sequence. And a sequence of uh, automatic scene switches can be programmed here so that you don't have to do them manually. So for example, if I press plus, and let's have a look at this line of code here. When this scene is active, switch to this scene after so many seconds using specific transition. So this is a great option for if you only want to show a scene for a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, let's have a look at, let's, let's go for when, uh, be right back is active, switch to live scene after. Now I w probably in real life, I probably want this for like five minutes so I can take a five minute break on my stream. Uh, but we're going to set it for five seconds just so I can show you this effect in full swing. So when be right back is active, switch to live after five seconds using, let's go fade. And I'm going to close that and go to be right back. And then in theory, after five seconds, it should automatically switch back to live. Four, three, two, one, boom. And there you have it. So after a certain amount of time, it will switch automatically. Now, one really cool thing you can do with the sequences is you can, you see down here, it says extend sequence. You could make this longer longer and longer with two, three, four, five scene switches. So if you had a sequence of scenes that you wanted to automatically fl flick through, then this is the uh, particular scene switcher option for you. What else do we have up here that you might want to use? Uh, what about, well, let's get rid of that so that that if function is no longer there. Uh, we have file. So uh, read write scene from to file. Switch scene based on file content. So have a look at this line. Switch to, let's say, be right back using fade. If content of local file matches, and then you put in some text. So if, let's say, I have a text GDI file of my Rocket League stats. And this is a file that automatically updates. And I want the, I want basically my scene to change when I hit five games unbeaten in a row. I can set this to whatever text that is in the text file that updates. And when it reads that text in the file, it will automatically switch the scene. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's a really cool feature of this advanced scene switcher. Time. This is great for IRL in real life streamers and people who run really long streams. I mean, 
I'm talking like 24 hour streams or something like that. Take a look at this. Uh, or if you stream every day, that is. On any day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So you can specify a particular time for this scene switch to happen. At, and then you put in your time, 2 p.m., 6 p.m., 5 a.m., whenever it might be. Switch to be right back using select transition. So this will read your local time and switch when it hits the specific time that you put in. Extremely, extremely useful. Maybe you have like a 24 hour live stream and you want the backdrop to change as the day goes on. So in the morning, you'd have like a bright morning scene in the afternoon, maybe like a springtime afternoon scene. And then at nighttime, you'd have like a nighttime dark with the moon and the stars scene. So this is really, really awesome for that idle. This is great for uh, if you do go AFK, this will automatically switch your scene based on the fact that you have been away for a certain amount of time. So if I enable idle detection and then after 60 seconds of no keyboard or mouse inputs, switch to scene. Really, really good if you tend to go away for like, I don't know, minutes at a time on your stream. Uh, audio is another great one. Let's add a line of if function here. So I'm going to go add and I'm going to go when the volumes of and I'm going to choose my microphone when the volume of my microphone is above. Uh, let's go is above. Let's go here because when I shout, it goes up here for zero seconds. So anytime it goes above that. We're going to switch scene to, uh, let's go to be right back for now using cut. Did you see that? And then it switched to cut unless source is active. So if I whisper, I'm actually going to put that up a little bit. So we're going to go back to live and I'm going to whisper. There we go. I'm back on live. I'm whispering. But when I raise my voice, it switches to be right back. So it's using your audio input capture to determine if it should switch the scene. Great if you have like a scene where, let's say, when you get angry and you scream, maybe you've got a larger webcam and you've got some flames and stuff. Uh, really, really useful and clever bit of code right there. Now, let's get rid of that. Otherwise, it's going to keep switching to be right back. I'm going to click on the if function, press minus. Uh, and I'm just trying to see if there's any other really useful settings here. Let me double check what I had written down. Uh, this will change if uh, you have the title of a window open. Pause all checks. Okay, yeah, this is a really, really useful menu that you need to know about. So at the moment, if we go into general settings, uh, our active, our switch is active. So I can press stop here to stop advanced scene switcher checking all of those uh, terms and conditions, or I can press start and it will start checking everything again. At the top of your status uh, settings menu here, check switch conditions every 300 milliseconds. You can reduce this. However, that will increase CPU very, very slightly. And let's go to the pause menu as we were. Pause all checks when a certain window is in focus or a scene is active. So if you're in a scene and you know that you want to be in that scene, you don't want to be interrupted by any switches, you need to set this up as a pause if function. So we go pause all checks when scene is active and I go to, uh, let's say I put this on ending. When I'm on the ending scene, I know that's the end of my stream, so I don't want advanced scene switcher to check anything at all. So that's why I would have that on. And there you have it, guys. That is Advanced Scene Switcher. Now, I did say at the start, don't get it confused with Automatic Scene Switcher. So if we go to here, and we go to Automatic Scene Switcher, and we go to Plus, Starting Streamlabs Desktop. So when you start Streamlabs Desktop, it's going to go to Starting. Now let's have a look at some other executables up here. Maybe... Um, because I, I don't have any ex executables open at the moment, it, they're not appearing in this list. But let's say I open my Outlook Mail. All I have to do is select Outlook Mail and select the scene I want it to switch to when I open that, Stream Label Scene, and press plus. And then it will automatically switch. It's basically what you can do in advanced scene switcher but in its own menu so what i would say is actually to not use this menu just manage everything i'm gonna go back to live just manage everything from inside the advanced scene switcher menu and you will be fine and dandy 
there you have it guys advanced scene switcher incredible plugin that you must must have on your obs studio